Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of the Jeb and Greencast. I'm your host, Tyler Green. With me as always is Vinyl Man Jeb. Hello, hello. <laughs> and today we have from the 88, Keith Sledadal. Keith, how are you? I'm doing great. Good. It's great, Hi, to, it's great to have you, man. Thanks. So what, what got you into being a musician? Oh, gosh. Uh, let's see. Well, I mean, when I was a kid, I just always loved music. I always had like a... a unique relationship with music like even when I was little little I remember I could um before I could read I knew what all the records were like all my parents records so I could go pick them out without being able to read what it was I just I don't know I, I think it just always had a an effect on me um but I don't know I mean it like questions like that it's like it's it's just always been uh, something that I've done and been interested in, and um, I know that's not the greatest answer, but uh, it's hey, it doesn't it doesn't always have it's to be just a, a dramatic uh, story, you know? Yeah, I wish I could put you know I think with most things it's like we try to put our finger on something, but it's really beyond our understanding you know, most of the time, and music certainly is that way with me, it's something that's so natural to me that it's like, it's almost like it was never not there, you know, <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I just remember my, my yeah, earliest I always, memories, I'm sorry, right, I always, saying? I always think looking back on my life that I always had, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you, <laughs> oh, no, it's okay, <laughs> now, I was just about to say, I've, I've always felt like in my life, looking back, I've always had, like, some sort of a sense of rhythm, mm. and that mm. kind of is what got me into becoming a drummer, I guess. Yeah, you know? it doesn't really go away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what it is or, Stuck with or why. It just happens. Yeah. I, I, I guess mean, some people are just born with it. Definitely. Yeah, and I definitely think, like, my earliest memories as a child are, um, you know, are surrounding music. Like, I just being in my dad's truck and driving and hearing certain songs and being moved in a weird way, like oh, yeah. that I'd never been, you know, like I remember a uh, wider shade of pale hearing that, like driving mm. with my dad and just being like, Whoa, that's doing something to me that, <laughs> that, Whoa, <laughs> you know, I mean like just <laughs> be a, and like, I always was kind of drawn to the melancholy a little bit, you know, like, oh, yeah, and yeah, that, same here. Yeah, those descending lines and just it's kind of sad, but um, you know I was always really moved by stuff like that. And then when I heard the Beatles, that was like, you know, it kind of. I mean that that hit me from like a whole other. Oh yeah. Angle, you know. <laughs> It's it's yeah. always the Beatles, man. You can never explain why, but it, they just have that effect. It's just they're there. If you're a musician, yeah. it's like you, either you, it's like you can't you can't not have them there. That's a big big part of all of our musician sure. lives. Sure. And so you mention and you mention, of course, you know, like the first time you hear these songs, like when you're out somewhere going in the car, like that's it's crazy how you remember how you first hear those songs and mm -hmm. you sometimes associate them with that first time whenever you hear yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for I definitely sure. Remember and hearing then, the Beatles too. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, and then you get older, and then, like, I never put it together that, just because I was moved by music, I never put together that I would make music. That was never even a thing in my head, you know. And oh, wow. then, yeah, and so, uh, even all of it just seems like I stumbled into it, and, you know. I never thought I could do that. Um, but then, you know, it, it became this, like, huge emotional release, you know, that I think, I mean, to this day, when I perform or sing or do anything, there's a, that, that part of me gets expressed. Uh, it doesn't get expressed anywhere else. You know, it's only when I do that. It's a very specific expression. Um that is, you know, there's no other area in my life where that happens, really, <laughs> you know. Interesting. It's a very <laughs> unique uh, thing, you know. But when you're a kid, you don't, you know, you're not, you're not thinking about it like that. You're just, it's very uh, intuitive, right? You're just doing it. And 
you know, you get older and you kind of look back and go, wow, wow. You know, maybe you don't do it quite as much as you used to. And then when you do, you're like, whoa, what a release. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, you know, but I never put it together. So, you know, that's what happens when you get older. You just kind of, you analyze, you know, you just analyze things a little more. (laughs) I don't know. Anyway. So you mentioned the Beatles and some other bands, but any uh, bands in particular or artists that really you think put an influence on you uh, in your music? Well, I mean, I think I'm probably influenced by everything I've mm-hmm. ever heard. You know, I mean, I think that's the truth. And then we pick, like, like the ones that really, really, uh, we really love. And But, I, I mean, honestly, I'd say 80s, like, pop radio probably had a, even though none, nothing I do sounds that way, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, I'd say the band that really, uh, besides the Beatles, that really kind of hit me was the Kinks. Ooh, nice. Yeah, the Kinks. Um, and then, of course, like Dylan was a huge thing that like totally rocked me as a teenager. Like, he just. I mean, that was like a whole other thing, yeah. you know, and then that like led into like, I really loved the band, like they, that was a big influence when I started was the band and, um, but then the Kinks, so like, but I always, I loved the Who, I loved um, a lot of the British stuff and then, the, but the Kinks never really got mentioned and, you know, at least I hadn't, I didn't really hear about them as much, you know, it was always the Who, Zeppelin, the Stones mm-hmm. and the Beatles and the Kinks were like this, like, you know, you, they just weren't as popular. You you never, you wouldn't go into a store and see a Kinks shirt. That was like very yeah, rare. Yeah, it's crazy too, because it, like they're known I mean, now too. as that raw power, like powerhouse band. But yeah, and like, you can yeah. still make the argument that they were just as important in the British. Oh, invasion. without a doubt, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, you I have mean, songs like, like "You Really Got Me" all day and all the night. Oh, yeah. of course, yeah. But their best, but the the crazy thing was that their not crazy, but their best records, in my opinion, didn't sell. Mm-hmm, yeah, <laughs> you know, so like those late '60s. I tend to see that a lot too, which is crazy. Yeah, and they had it's, a really it's insane. <laughs> yeah, they had a crazy story. They they got banned from come, you know, from touring the U.S. at like the wow. height of their popularity. Oh, so that, for like, phew. yeah, so they just kind of got forgotten. But anyway, I was a little bit older, and I had like a you know I was in my early 20s at that point and just thought like my attitude at the time was I know everything and <laughs> you know I said that kid ego mm-hmm. and uh so the drummer in the band uh, we we started this band me and my buddy went to high school together started a band our original drummer was a huge Kinks fan and I you know he was like you should really listen to them and I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Like, I just didn't want to admit that I didn't know something. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's <laughs> super crazy. And then um, I remember I bought, like, Village Green and um, something else. That was the other record. And I was just blown away. I, I Like, instantly, because it was so in my wheelhouse, and yet I didn't know it. And I just couldn't understand why why have I not heard this? <laughs> you know, it just didn't mm-hmm. make any sense. So anyway, Ray Davies had a huge impact on me. Like, um, cause like I said, I was a little bit older and, um, it just hit me at a, at a, like the perfect time in my life. I was, you know, there's just a lot swirling around at that time. I was not doing well personally. I was strung out and, you know, and so it was like this, I started writing songs out of that kind of turmoil. That was, I'd never, I mean, going back to what I said earlier, like I never thought I could make music that never dawned on me. And then even when I was making music and playing in a band, I didn't think I could write, you know, but really in my heart, that's what I wanted to do. Like that's, I didn't want to be a shredding guitar player. I didn't, that's not, you know, I wanted to play like John Lennon. (laughs) <laughs> like, I wasn't interested in playing like Eric Clapton or something like that, even though all those guys are great. I love that stuff, but I didn't see myself in that, you know? And so, um, so out of that, you know, I started making songs and, 
that's when everything changed. I mean, the band went from like, it just completely changed overnight, you know, because now there was like a point of view. There was like a, and a specific direction, you know, whereas leading up to that, it was very just kind of jammy and songs would get created, but they were almost by committee and they, they weren't bad or anything. It's just uh, when I started just writing, 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 you know, everything changed. And I'm, I don't think it, that answered any of you. No, <laughs> that was perfect. No worries. No, man, it's, it's no that's, what's, that's what we hope for. We hope that, like they just go on and we just listen. That's what we're here for. So it's perfect. <laughs> we, <laughs> it's, live, we live for the It's our secret. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tyler. Okay, so you're next up. question? Or? Yeah, Tyler, you're up. Okay, so. Um... So the '88 had their song at least there at least it was here and this and it was the theme for this. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'll I'll start again. Yeah, Jeff, you can start again. You got this. You're good. <laughs> okay, so, all right. okay, so you guys had your song the '88. You guys had your song at least it was here become the theme of community. How did that happen? Um, the uh, uh, these two guys or the what are they called? The Russo brothers. They produced the show, or they were they were part of. I think they were producers on the show, and same, they had used Russos as the Marvel Russos, right? Pro, yes. Oh wow! Oh, amazing! Yeah, I think. <laughs> I'm I forgetting mean, that, yeah. Probably. Um, <laughs> they made. They were part of a movie, I believe. This could all be wrong, by the way. <laughs> but they did a Won't movie called uh, You, Me, and Dupree. It had Owen Wilson and oh, yeah, I know that one. Kate Hudson. Anyway, the first scene, they used one of our songs. The first opening sequence is um, one of our songs. And um, so I guess they were fans of the band. or um, And I think it was them or someone affiliated with with the show reached out and asked if we wanted to take a crack at writing um, theme song for the show and uh, so that's how that came about and the great thing was um, that they their only direction was to just sound like us which you would think is an obvious request <laughs> but it's amazing how mm-hmm. how often it's not that way <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I, didn't, I didn't know the song was specifically written for uh, for the show yeah it was and, oh, and interesting. the interesting thing about it was that lyrically, almost all of those lyrics were stream of consciousness placeholders just for the melody. And, you know, because we sent that to them really early, you know, before I even formulated any lyrics or anything, just to see if, hey, is this even the right track? Is this the right feel? And, you know, said, hey, you know, these lyrics can all be changed. This is just, um, I just made this up on the spot. And um, they ended up liking them. (laughs) And so it's kind of like famous for being like a dark theme song. I mean, it's, it's a happy, upbeat tune and melody, but the, um, the lyrics are, I don't know. I mean, there's all these theories about, it's about suicide and all this stuff, but of course it's not, (laughs) but, (laughs) but I mean, I couldn't say what it's about really other than, I Just mean, the only there, direction, yeah. yeah, but the, the, the uh, you know, the part, like, there's other lyrics that are a bit more on the nose, like, relating to the show, but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just, like, all the best stuff, like, were all the, the things that ended up working for us, or for me, they're usually, like, the accidents, or the... Hmm the easier it's not like me laboring over something for days and weeks and um i mean that's just been my experience there's nothing wrong with working hard on stuff but it just seems like we're the, we're the same way here so <laughs> we're we're yeah. in a, we do when we do our music uh, owen and i and tyler are now too it's just amazing uh, a lot of the stuff it's my first takes that are like okay <laughs> Yeah. That's it. We got it, and it's it's pretty nice. You know, yeah, some of some of the songs got to work on, but it uh, most Jeff of the is, Jeff is what I like to call the one take wonder <laughs> yes. when it comes to recording. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> and I can't wait for you guys to hear this stuff. Oh, Trust yeah. me, it's, uh, it's coming every time now. Tyler, Tyler, kind of <laughs> but but uh, we got some, and, and Frankie, Frankie with Isolated Do was amazing. Actually, Frankie was supposed to be on with us today, but he'll be on in the future. Well, we'll get him. <laughs> you all, so Keith, you also got to be a part of the uh, recent Zoom reunion for community what was that like uh that was really fun um 
it was kind of came out of nowhere and uh you know it was let's see one of the things i took away was it was neat to see how close they all were and that they were like genuine they were like a oh, family. Wow, I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, almost yeah. to the point where I felt like I shouldn't be on the call. <laughs> it was so different. It yeah. just felt so personal, just um, listening to them talk for, you know, just joke around and laugh. And so that was that's really so good when you have set chemistry that actually yeah. goes outside the show. Yeah. I love that show, by the way, one of my favorites. Still yeah. getting through with it. I'm only on season two, I think. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> well, I, I, while to go. It it's It's very good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing when you get asked to, to do, you know, at that point when we were asked to do it, I mean, we watched the pilot and mm -hmm. you never know with that stuff. It's like rare that something, it's just rare to be a part of something that's interesting and oh yeah and uh, unique and so cool. original. And so, um, I'm, you know, feel very fortunate to to get to be a and part of it. And for it to be out, because sometimes these pilots early on, they, a lot of times they change the show or it doesn't get out. Like, there oh, was yeah, a, like sure. uh, Sebastian, I forget his last name, the comedian, had a really funny show that was supposed to be like kind of like a Seinfeld thing. And it looked oh, fantastic. Yeah. The pilot got, they said no. And it's was like, oh, so some mm -hmm. of these shows, big names, and they don't get out, you know? So it's yeah. cool that it actually got out. And not just one season or two, you know, a yeah. bunch. So it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, no, it's... Um, uh, it was very unexpected, and so anyway, the the table read thing was really fun, and I was really happy to be a part of it. Awesome. That's great. That is wonderful. Okay, so <laughs> shout out to Frankie Syracuse yet again. Yeah, um, so how did you guys start working together? He contacted me. Gosh, he would be better with the dates. Mm -hmm. I, I'm terrible with years, but it's oh. been – Gosh, five or six. Wow. I, I, you know what? I could be. I could be wrong. But <laughs> it's years ago. He reached out to me. He was a fan of the band, and he started doing. He was working on this collaboration project where, at that time, he was working with. He had a partner, and they were reaching out to artists that they liked, and um, the idea was they had, you know, pieces of music written and recorded and uh they wanted just to collaborate with other people so cool. the and and in any they were very open about like whatever that ended up being so you know you want to add lyrics and sing it you want to change stuff you know oh, you know frankie awesome. he's just yeah the, frankie yeah. is amazing <laughs> yeah <laughs> just the that's how isolated do got done a little producer, bit was that way too. engineer oh yeah. yeah we we love him oh yeah definitely. oh yeah no he's like <laughs> one of my favorite people but um he's just good at everything and but we just hit it off i mean that's awesome i just the music he sent over was interesting you know there was one piece that the I think it was one of the ones I sang. Um, it was kind of like Radiohead, like the changes Ooh. were um, really weird, and and I was like, huh, because again, it's like kind of like with TV stuff or anything. It's rare, you know. You get a lot of stuff sent to you, maybe, or you hear a lot of things, and then you know, it's rare that something kind of sticks out. You're like, oh, that's interesting. And, yeah. So um, that's how it happened, and then we, I went to his studio, which was in Van Nuys at the time, and then we just hit it off, you know, and um, then we, gosh, he ended up doing the last, we recorded the last 88 record um, at his studio. Oh, cool. Yeah, um, but he and I, it just became like a partnership, you know, like pretty, pretty immediately. And, uh, you know, we've become really close friends, and uh, I can't say enough great things about him. You know? Neither can we. He is yeah, we got to meet him, and then amazing. I never expected to even be able to work with him. And when I sent Isolated <laughs> Do Out, he sent the picture of the lyrics sitting in the lab, and I was like, I wish I was the lyrics right now, but this is good enough. <laughs> yeah. I was just so excited uh, yeah, to be no, able to do just that. The, he's one, and part of his charm is that he doesn't know how – or he knows how good he is, but mm -hmm. but he's humble. He's just yeah, <laughs> he's he just very... like yeah. It's like whenever because I've watched you know over the years like all of these things come to fruition in his life and in his career, and none of them have been surprising to me at all. 
you know, but to him, <laughs> he's always like really like, dude, can you believe him? I'm like, yeah, I totally can believe it. I'm the same way. And I think I get it from him. Like, uh, he came up, uh, we saw Toad the Wet Sprocket. Um, and he was like, yo, you want to come? And I'm like, yeah, I'll buy tickets. He goes, no, they're, they're going to pay for you. You're going to be backstage. I was like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, oh, wait a second. He's like, why are you buying tickets? He goes, you're part of the guest list. I was like, oh, <laughs> I didn't know this. So we actually oh, met with awesome. him and he met my parents and it was a very cool experience. And I think Tyler, you met him at one of the Posey shows I, I did, yeah, as well, I very, which I have very, still very not seen him with the Posies, which is um, something I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, great. Yeah. When I met Frankie, uh, like a good four years ago, I yeah, uh, wow. was at one of the one of the Posey shows they did. Uh, he he was very he was nothing but kind and oh, yeah. like he answered all my questions and stuff. Like oh my god, how are you guys running this and stuff? And like he was mm-hmm. he would come to me, ask me like, hey, how's your band and everything? And like he's yeah. that's, I I always love when musicians that I idolize are just like the kindest, oh, yeah. warmest souls and like they're yeah. willing to just get to know you. Like they're not in it for like sure. a buck. They're just in it for the fans. Shout out yeah. to like Eric Dover and Frankie Vinci who were recently on the show. Like Fra- uh, Eric Dover a while ago back who also like talked to me about birds. <laughs> like we just had a like and it's Eric freaking Dover. And then Frankie Vinci just recently was at his house uh, actually learning some of his stuff uh, from Photomaker. So he was just our recent, most recent guest. So, uh, cool. so yeah, very, it's very nice. And, and Keith, I could see from you too as well. You kind of as well you give me that same presence, which is amazing. Of course, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah, we're. Just, I see the uh, same thing. So, <laughs> yeah, we're si- we're similar uh, similar guys for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's you know, I'd always I've always for years and years, uh, my main musical partner was this guy named Adam Adam Marin, really talented piano player, producer, another guy that can kind of do a lot of things. And he was always, he was really the driving, you know, element of the 88. He was, you know, just good with, like, the business side, Mm -hmm. but also, like, you know, he was a great engineer and producer. And he and I, you know, we'd just been really close friends for so long. And I, you know, I'd I'd always written almost everything we did, but I'm terrible with the technical side of music and I'm just not really that interested in it. I never have been. So I've always needed somebody, you know what I mean? And then it, the way life works, like Frankie and that relationship kind of presented itself at the right time. And also I want to say that it's way, it's like that relationship was, was and is about much more than just music, you know? So I think we, you know, we would have these like two hour, three hour long talks at his studio and we wouldn't, none of it was about music. Yeah, it was just, that, that's what it is. That's, yeah. that, that's what you, 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 you know, you don't ex- like expect, I guess I don't expect it, but when you, when it happens, it's beyond amazing. You yeah. Know? And that's kind of what I feel like with Ken, when he comes around strength, all of the posies mm-hmm. where, where I get, both of us have the chance to talk to him and stuff. And I sang on stage with him twice and it oh, was like cool. this connection of like Ken doesn't realize, and I think Frankie kind of emulates the same as Ken sometimes too. Is the power that he has from just saying hi to someone, and right. the magic like the keeps me, keeps us going, you know. And I and it's something mm. about Ken that just comes out of that too. And I see that in a lot of musicians, and they don't have to be yeah. that way. That's not expected, you know. Yeah. It's just amazing, and and it brings such a light to the reason why I want to be a fan of him. You know, there's a reason yeah. now. It's not just the music. It's it's the passion that they have towards people that want to be just like them. Or and it's not an annoyance. It's more of like wow thank you <laughs> yeah yeah that's awesome again man. it all yeah. comes down to you you know just how humble these people are exactly yeah, yeah. it's amazing and tyler you've had opportunities is just as cool like meeting these guys both of us meeting the posies and kind of how we started this podcast we met because i did an interview with ken and i was and, and tyler's like you need a co-host i'm like yeah i do Let's do it. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. And we've never met in person. This is actually our little, You're we mentioned kidding. it once in a while. No. So we, we've done this podcast for a while. Sometimes we'll do episodes on our own. I just recently interviewed uh, Tino Troy of Praying Mantis, um, a metal band from the 80s. And yeah. uh, we've never actually met. And we plan to meet hopefully next year or a year oh, after or really so. Cool. Uh, we formed a band. <laughs> uh, we formed a band with another <laughs> friend of mine who I've never met, who I've been making music with for a long time, uh, Owen Radford. <laughs> 
and uh, three of us plus Jason Cropper and a couple other artists, uh, two two ex Posies members, Arthur and Dave Fox. Uh, wow! We've so none cool. of us. I've only met Dave Fox out of the whole group. I've only met Dave Fox when he was touring with the Posies. So isn't that, <laughs> it's, isn't it's that really amazing? That I know like, <laughs> these in this this time that. You can start a band yeah. and you, with people you've never met. <laughs> it's crazy, or or have these podcasts, which it's it's amazing because yeah, no, some of them, like with with Tino, I was going to talk about this earlier too. Um, uh, with Tino, um, I've been trying to get him on the show for two years, mm-hmm. and it's been like I don't care if he, you know, they've been busy, you know, record everything, and they're big time, you know, metal, and I've been trying. He was like a dream guest, and he was like, I'm home now. He goes, Yeah, I'll come on. I'm like, okay. That's really cool. <laughs> so Good yeah, we, that was that was a lot of fun. Um. And then uh, my next question for you uh, is the writing and recording process like for You Know You Know, your new album. I really enjoyed yeah. that album, by the way. Thank you. And so I think Tyler did too, right, Tyler? <laughs> yeah, I listened to most uh, of so it. Good. i got to finish the rest soon. There you go. You got to do that. I, I just finished right before the show because I wanted to have it fresh in the brain uh, before yeah. I go on. I like doing that. And I, I noticed a couple of Graham Nash sounding stuff. So yeah, Holly's... Yeah, I read that, uh, read that comment and I... Yeah. Uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, maybe like... Um, do you know the songs for beginners record yes yeah because the one you the, there's a track called one and all which i yeah. think is the one you were talking yep. about um so anyway that popped i mean that was not conscious but mm-hmm. when you mentioned it i said oh yeah i could see that <laughs> perfect so yeah what was the uh, recording and writing process for that album like um, well, I moved to Atlanta um, from Los Angeles. I'm, I grew up in LA. My whole family's out oh. there. And then my wife's my wife grew up in the Atlanta area. Um, her dad passed away four four or five years ago. Oh. Um, then the band split up, and so we started thinking about moving because um, there was nothing. There wasn't as much holding us in LA, and. Um, you know, her mom was by herself out here. And so then before you knew it, we were, the the ball just started rolling. And we were, so anyway, we moved to Atlanta. And when the dust kind of settled, um, you know, I just really didn't know what I was doing, you know. Um, and this is all looking back on it. At the time, it, I don't want to sound too dramatic or anything. <laughs> it wasn't like I was struggling or it was just, um, you know, Life I don't know. I mean, mm-hmm. yes. Anyway, I was here and then, uh, there was no songs. I just had no real inspiration and, um, just out of nowhere came this like, um, maybe a two or three month, maybe like a two month period where all the songs just kind of started to come. And um, I think one and all, the one we were just talking about, was probably the first one. Ah. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know why. Or, and then I just started writing a bunch of songs. And um, part of the inspiration for it was, do you know Ty Siegel? Yes. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, okay, so this is going to sound a little weird. I, I like him a lot. I don't know a lot of his music. But whenever I would hear anything of his... Um, I would go. That sounds really cool. It just it just <laughs> it yeah. just sounds it just sounds cool. And what I love about him is that he doesn't seem overly precious about anything. He's he makes tons of records. There's it just doesn't seem like there's a lot of like you know f- f- analysis or thought or you know he just is just it's making like the first this. take style. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I think like I had really fallen into like being really precious about songs and like having this weird standard of you know it, almost like well if I were to play this acoustic would it still be yeah a great song and and I'm thinking I don't know man like these these songs that I'm liking I was trying to picture them acoustic and I'm like, are they great songs? Like, I don't know, but <laughs> they just, it was like, it will, it almost like gave me permission to kind of just, just start making stuff. And, um, which I, I, I mean, I don't know if that makes sense to you no, guys. No, actually it does. Um, it's like a flip it thing. It's, it's, 
I, I've um I've noticed too, like with music as well. It's like you kind of put together these songs, and you get like you hold on to them too much, and then when you mm-hmm. you want to change something, or, or like with uh, for example, one of the songs, the reason why we <laughs> your friendship has been like a year out, uh, for example, is that like the song called Mindy is uh, that I I kept doing retaking vocal takes when the first vocal take was fine enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it started yeah, ruining man. the song. It made us not want to. Rec- it made me not want to record it anymore. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, I'm yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. One take wonder. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> which doesn't mean yeah, like every song is like that, but it's just some songs. It's like you, you put your heart into it, but the heart was already there, and it's like you're now wearing it out trying to make sure it's perfect right. when it's already perfect. <laughs> no, it's yeah. it's very true. And then you know, I think, and then we want to make that a rule, right? Yeah, it's oh, always yeah. the first take, but it's not. And that's, no, it's, it's whatever that's, it feels. Yeah. Fe- it's about feelings. It's about what and you feel comfortable cool, with. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's also like leads into what I got back in touch with it with music is that I'd done it for so long. Mm-hmm. I'd written so many songs and all that that I'd become so identified as this guy that's supposed to know how to write a song. <laughs> and that's like a weird like narrative that's not necess- that's not necessarily true. Because when I really look at how songs get made, I have no idea. And every after every one I make or that gets made, I swear that's going to be the last one. Really? Yeah, it just because it's such a mysterious thing. And I, I think I wasn't really like I wasn't really um, giving myself to the mystery and the adventure of it because I decided I'm supposed to know how to do this. Huh. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I understand like, that. Yeah. I can see it, yeah. Yeah, and so then, like, you know, to become like a child again and to go, oh, you don't know what you're doing. That's what makes it fun. Yeah. You don't like, know curiosity. where this is going to end up, yeah. right? And then each time you do it, it's this really fun, like, it's an adventure. And then the mind tries to get, you know, grab hold of it and claim it. And that, mm. that's really the whole battle. It's just always with Sounds yourself. like meditation because <laughs> it's literally yeah. like they tell you to, to look at the room with curiosity and to look and don't label objects that you see, which mm-hmm. is interesting to put. But when you put it into songwriting, I can see that as like, oh, I've done this already. But wait a second. This is a new piece of art. It's a new yeah. wonder. Yeah. Well, I started making these collages, you know, Ooh. like I'd never really done that. And then. Um, I'd never identified as a visual artist. I never, (laughs) you know, and so then all of a sudden, and it was really fun because I was very in touch with the fact that I didn't know what I was doing (laughs) and what happened, what happened. Yeah. But then what happened was I saw, Oh, this is the same thing as making music. It's not different. It's one thing. It's the same thing. But Mm. I forgot, I lost that because I become, identified as this guy that's supposed to know a bunch of stuff about this thing and then it got me back in touch with like no 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 you just you never know and and then all of a sudden there was like permission to start making things again and but i mean this was all like in hindsight so i don't know if that's exactly how i felt when it was happening but all i know is there was no songs and then there was a bunch of songs and even jeremy you the other day you posted a that um donovan record yeah and that record was like another influence on the recordings which was a weird that is so weird because your friend yeah. jeb has been heavily donovan induced uh we have yeah. uh plaster and this other actually one of the songs that i didn't expect to be donovan induced which is really cool how this like uniqueness is that i didn't tell anybody that this certain one sound the alarm that i sent to a few people um was not supposed to be a don like that was just another song that we did with terry draper of Quatu, too uh that mm-hmm. actually got to work with him which was amazing oh, cool. um but that that it's funny how like you mentioned that because it's like I posted the Donovan thing because I was such in a groove with that and I love that mm-hmm. record Hurdy Gurdy yeah. Man's probably one of my most ultimate favorite songs but I sent it to one of my yeah. friends and he goes this is Donovan in 2020 without even telling him and it's like interesting how your your influences just come out and they just yeah. flavor into yeah, your music because yeah, yeah. it was funny because Tyler was mentioning that too it's like this sounds like Donovan and I was like yeah <laughs> no I love I love, I love, him I love and, Donovan um, and even like the guitars on Hurdy Gurdy Man, like mm-hmm. that, like if you think of the first song on the record, um, my record that, yeah, um, when that guitar comes in, that's very, I mean, I just made like a mood board of, <laughs> just I mean, like I just sent Frankie like five or six songs, of just kind of like, 
where I was at a little like bit. Like ideas. And yeah, I mean, and even the write, even the songs themselves, they reminded me of things that I would have written when I was younger. Like my first songs, like more, you know, like for better or for worse, the thing I really enjoy about the record is that it's totally me, and that every choice was is just very me. You know, it doesn't not good or bad, but just uh, like I don't think. Uh, I know that the 88 wouldn't have made that record and that, that that's not good or bad. It's just, mm-hmm. it wouldn't have been, it was, you know, those types of songs. I don't know. But, um, uh, yeah, I don't remember what we were talking about. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll bring you back in. Tyler, you're up next with the next yeah. question. <laughs> yeah, there's a specific song I wanted to ask about with, uh, on the album, Lo- Lady is Love. Can you yeah. talk about, Sort of like the the writing and recording process behind that. Um, sure. The the well, so the whole record, I demoed here. So and then I demoed probably about eighteen songs, something like that. And um, and I'm glad I put a fair amount of work into it. And I knew we were gonna try to make a record. And me and Frankie were talking about it. And me flying out to L.A. and you know d- doing it. Um, so I wanted to present him with, you know, a good representation of the songs, you know, so I put some effort into the vocals. I ended up doing all the acoustic guitars and singing everything here, but I didn't know that I, you know, I didn't know that I wouldn't have to re-sing stuff. Um, yeah, so it actually (laughs) saved a lot of time. So everything we just built off of those, those sessions. So, um, yeah, so it ended up saving a lot of time. Um, and so, to me, like, Lady is Love kind of reminds me of T-Rex a little bit. Oh, yeah, um, I was going to say it reminds me a little bit of a, either Wings or the Lemon Twigs. Yeah, I could <laughs> see that. I mean, they're all yeah crossing over in weird ways for yeah. sure. Um, the verse definitely to me is very T-Rex-y. Um, and, uh, and, I mean, like... So I'll just give you just memories of like what jumps out to me like with that song um, is that bass line and that was totally yeah freaky. that's another thing I wanted to point out was that yeah that one's bass line is yeah. just really bouncy yeah and it's very kinksy that descending yeah. ding 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 yeah ding, it's ding, I, ding, I, I, ding, that ding, did ding, stand ding, out ding. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that and the, that and the drums are what really bring the uh, yeah. wings yeah, yeah. comparison Fair. to me yeah really cool drum sound. Um, really cool playing of course um and frankie plays you know a, a large percentage of the instruments on the record uh, you know there was i think on one and all that song i played organ and piano here and we ended up keeping it but other frankie's than that, more than I mean, a drummer folks <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> much much more i mean yeah. even if i had the idea for like certain guitar parts you know sometimes mm-hmm. i just like hand him the guitar go dude you're you're gonna do You're this better. quicker than I will. <laughs> <laughs> Just play it. There you um, go. Yeah, so it was like, I mean, it was really cool. We did it in like an eleven days in wow. LA, and um, you know, it's like he's just. Uh, it was just really easy and really fun and like a lot of um, just a lot of ideas were happening, which is really cool because you know, you guys know, it's like. It's not always that way, you know, no. sometimes. Sometimes you yeah. have arguments while it's in the crafting stage yeah. and it could have been this beautiful project and it just, you know, you start to have to take a break back and go, wait a second, yeah. it's about the music for a second. Or, you know, it's great when you can meet with someone like, you know, with Frankie and you guys from what you're saying is like that. It's like, oh, it's just fun. And that's what it should be. It's just fun. Yeah. And it's like with Frankie with Isolated Do, it was literally done in a, a day. He he surprised yeah. the because we were supposed to do a different song and then that I sent to him and he was like yeah we'll do this one I'm like okay I wrote this in 20 minutes <laughs> and yeah, he was like let's cool. do it and he turned it around and I did not expect because I just asked him for drums you know I'm not not knowing anything and he was like mm-hmm. can I can, he he was all excited he's like can I put piano and can I put bass on this I'm like yeah go ahead <laughs> like I'm not yeah. I'm not gonna say no <laughs> yeah that's that's awesome he man. is amazing yeah he's he's great uh, well uh, he'll be on definitely in the future hopefully we're supposed to have him on today yeah. but uh hopefully we'll definitely we have to drag him on here at some point <laughs> yeah, no. I'll fly you out know, to LA he, just to tell him that he needs to be on here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, that, I I think that's about all I can think of 
Mm -hmm. I mean, Lady is Love also kind of reminds me of my daughter. Like, so it's Aww. it's kind Aww. of like talking about, you know, that sort of um, almost like advice. Like, don't worry, you're you're perfect. Aww. You you like are, that. you know, and everything's. Yeah, I mean, if you if you. I'm not going to quote the lyrics right now, but if you were, <laughs> you know, if you listen to it, you'll get what I'm saying, I think. When is this album supposed to come out? Uh, I'm really not sure, only because, um, sorry about the dog. Oh, no worries. Dog's part of the podcast now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Welcome. You know, with everything going on, it's just, we yeah, it's just keep push, pushing it back just because out of respect for yeah of course what's happening so i mean we you know we had planned on it already being out but um i think the single maybe we'll put out friday maybe Ooh. um and then the the record will be early july oh, oh wait cool. no it's all we're almost no <laughs> i'm not sure probably yeah. about in about a month or well guys we'll, we'll keep so. the description updated as soon as it comes out uh we'll, we'll put it down in the description on the video, because the video will probably be viewed at different times, you know, could be viewed way after the record comes out. They might want to come see the podcast about it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, man. And I was gonna pick a song as well, but you described most of the stuff behind it. But I'm I'm gonna say the one that I really like uh, out of the one uh, is "Nowhere to Run." Uh, what was the the process oh, cool. behind that one? I really like that one. Um, that one. I remember I was in my car. And uh, just the melody came to me, and I Ooh, sang it into perfect. my phone. And then um, the lyrics are kind of like a little like angry, which is not. The, I don't. I think it's the only one on the record like that. Well, no, there's one other one that's kind of like that. But um, it's like a finger pointing kind of song. But the thing is, like, it's always about you. You know, it's always about mm -hmm. me. A little so Lennon there with that one. <laughs> a little like John Lennon style. Uh, yeah, the I way mean, that... it's, you can't get away from it. No. You know, I, I know like he famously said that and, and it's, but it's just, it's a universal truth. You know, even when you think it's like you spot it, you got it, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So it's like, I don't remember exactly. I mean, I, I could say it had some sort of like, poli I don't know. I mean, it's it just, um, I guess it's just like you look at the way, like things that happen in this life and, and, you know, sometimes you just vent about it or something. And, Song is the best way to do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, that's what it is to me. But I mean, even like when we were, it's, so like that song and, um, the, the song, uh, what is it? Um. It's never been easier to appear interesting. Those are my two favorites. Oh, cool! Yeah, the, um, <laughs> that's, that's funny. So that's actually the drummer and bass player from the '88 played on Ooh. those two, Ooh. and um, a bit of reunion right there. And they played on the song called "Cause I'm a Lover" too. So they did three. They were on three of those songs. They came for one day, and you know we kind of did the like the three most. Uh, um, straight ahead type songs, you know, cause we didn't have a lot of time and mm -hmm. to like sit around and really like, you know, do the more like esoteric stuff. So we did kind of like the rockers with them and, uh, they play great. I mean, they're, they're incredible. And that was really fun. Um, uh, was, uh, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm trying to remember if there's anything else interesting about, <laughs> about it. Um, but no, I mean each each song we tried to kind of just find something interesting to to present and not make everything sound the same and um you know I don't know it was really fun I mean that's my those are my memories of of the, of those songs I mean I, and like the song uh, it's never been easier you know originally Frankie he was hearing it like as this kind of like what would the eighty eight do and I was like, ah. no, dude, don't, I don't want to do what the idiot did. <laughs> Stop you it. Know? <laughs> I definitely remember that. I remember that day, like, going, like, dude. Because it was, like, he was, so it was, we would just have these, like, really quick 
conversations mm-hmm. that would like push, you know, like, well, no, man, like, let's, can we make it more far out or weirder or like, what else can we do? And then he ended up doing all these like weird effects that I'm, I'm not sure he's ever used before. Wow. Um, you know, like the guitars on that song. And like, I think the guitars are heavier on the record than probably anything that I've done. Not on all the songs, but on some mm-hmm. of them, you know. Um, so I was just wanting to try things that I hadn't tried before, you know. It's always good. Absolutely. Yeah. I love, I love, I love experimenting in the studio. For sure. Always. Yeah. And why would you want to keep making the same thing? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we do Raw Garage Rock and Jeb and the Riots, which Tyler's now a honorary part of with a little bit of our stuff, which is amazing. Got a little cool. team going stay here. Tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. We got a, we got two records on the load at the probably about the same time. Uh, one bigger than the other, and one might be you know you never know. You can't. I don't even want to say that because they could be both as just as big, which is amazing. And uh, Change of Seasons with Lisa Michaels on the way, uh, which is very cool. exciting. Very very exciting. Uh, can't wait. Very can't pressure wait on it. my vocals though. Lisa's amazing uh, ooh, uh but uh that's we'll get that we'll get that it's 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 fun it's very fun music uh to be able to i think it's very fun with this time period i mean i hate to say it but it's like i've been able to actually launch a career during this which is very strange um mm. I was yeah. just to got my dream job, which I thought was my dream job, was working at a concert venue, just to be in the the concert venue area, and then have the podcast, and and then be able to do music, mm-hmm. you know, all one. Yeah. And I left college for that and everything, just to kind of get everything focused. And then this hits, and I'm like, what am I gonna do? And I guess I'm I, my path has been clear that you're gonna make music and make podcasts with your best yeah. friend Tyler. And I'm like, what's up, Tyler? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, man. it's a lot of fun, really, and then appreciate really the guests like you, Keith, who who come out of the woodwork and like we want to come on. And it was cool because yeah, no, uh, Frankie set this up for us, which was awesome. Yeah, I appreciate you uh, having oh, me. Yeah. Thank no, you. no problem. It's always a pleasure having you on, man. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Tyler, you got one last question for him, and we'll wrap I it up. I do. So what's next on the horizon for you in terms of music? Mm, I really don't know. I mean, I haven't been writing much mm. at all. Um, I did, uh, you know, there's just, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm really just waiting to kind of put out this music and um, very uh, I don't know if proud is the right word but I just feel really good about all the choices that were made on the record and um, it um, so that's really where I'm at I'm not really I mean I'm more uh I'm not even really thinking about music like that these days, like what's next and what should I do? And I mean, when I was younger, that's all I thought about. It was always the next thing. Oh, yeah. the next yeah. thing. But, but um, nowadays, I mean, it's such a victory when anything gets made, you know, to make anything, to finish something, to, to share something like that's a big deal you, you, to me now. Like when I was a kid, I'd never thought about that stuff. It was like, Oh, what, When's the next record, you know, like, mm-hmm. but now it's like, I don't take that stuff for granted, you know, like I did. So to me, it's just, uh, it's a victory just to, to finish something and, you know, and then the final part of that is sharing it for whatever reason. I don't know why that is, but to it seems that way to me that the final part of the process is sharing it. And um, sharing is and, caring. And, oh yeah, Tyler. <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then after that, you know, usually it, like when that's released, then it kind of opens up. Now, I I wouldn't be surprised if then new songs start happening, and because it's just always been that way. Yeah, um, it's like you think you're gonna quit, and then it's just nope. It's all yeah, here. It, but yeah, it's just <laughs> staying open to like yeah. not. To, to like really, um, you know, uh, resting in that not knowing and that that comes with age and whatever. I mean, like when we had our daughter, I kind of intuitively knew that music no longer completely defined me. But wow. up until then, it was like, who would I be if I'm not doing this thing? That's what I feel now, and I'm young, so it may, I'm not in the wrong path. I'm not in the wrong path, guys. I'm, I'm insane. <laughs> and that doesn't mean that you're not going to do, like, mm-hmm. that That revelation did not mean that I wasn't going to continue doing music. 
because I did. Yeah. Do you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, you're like, here. You're here right now. But it's <laughs> yeah. But it's like you kind of. It's okay not to know, and I think that that's yeah. the hardest thing for everybody. I mean, if you look, gosh, everywhere you look, it's people knowing all kinds of things. It's our great obsession is to be this person that knows, you know, and and I'm just very in touch with the not knowing, you know, and so. I want to be I in touch know. with that. Teach me. <laughs> like I'm always worried about tomorrow, but you meditation's been ways. helping, and I well, think I think it really does help with the focusing on medit- what's today, yeah. what's today, what's right. what's going to happen today, and then if you have stuff to do in the future, that's okay. But focusing on today actually helps the stuff in the future to be even better than you thought it was going to be today. I don't know. Just and repeating myself. <laughs> yeah, and if you stick with the meditation, mm-hmm. you're going to find a lot of things. You know, and you're gonna, you're probably gonna find a lot of things that you thought were ironclad truths are not necessarily. You know what I found so. very unique about, and it's fun to kind of talk about meditation for anybody out there that's like going through, especially now with everything going on. I really do suggest meditation, which Frankie and Keith have mentioned to me, and Frankie was like, "You should do this." And then, then it was funny because Frankie was like, "I should do this." He goes, "What app are you using?" And I'm like, "I gave him the app and everything," which is Smiling Mind, uh, not not a not a uh, sponsored or anything, but I just really enjoy uh, the app. And it's, it it allowed me to touch the truth. You know, and I started noticing about myself is to actually be comfortable. I thought meditation was to get rid of the feelings of this thing. Mm -hmm. It's actually to be comfortable with the feelings and to accept that they do happen. And and it's not to get rid of them, which I thought was very interesting because I went in there with a different mindset. Like, Oh, I'm going to get rid of all these feelings. Never going to feel upset. No, that's not, that's not true. You're going to feel upset, but you're going to be comfortable when you're upset to know that tomorrow is going to be better. Or, or vice versa. I thought that was really cool. And um, also, I mean, like, also maybe even sensing that there's very clearly, just as you were speaking, there is a you and there are these feelings. Yeah. Okay, so the thing, you know, the trap is that we get completely sucked in. We identify as the feelings. We become, car- we get carried away by the feelings. But really... I think about it like with clouds in the sky, right? Mm-hmm. We're not the clouds. We're on the we're, the, yeah. we're the sky. Oh, oh I right. Like that. If you, I, like I mean, if you think about it like that, like that, these things are the clouds are always shifting and changing and moving and you know coming and going. Oh wow! The, I do like that. <laughs> and but there's this backdrop to all of it that that is what you are. That's untouched. Like that's the whole thing. Wow. There, the, this thing that you think you are, you're not. <laughs> and that's why we're, it. yeah, we're constantly being sucked into like this uh, experience or this narrative that, you know, uh, we're always on the brink of, you know, some something terrible mm-hmm. is about to happen to, to us. But I think meditation is kind of like the gate, you know, Just the kinda, door. Yeah. yeah, you kind of, you start to see like, okay, well, I'm lo- I'm witnessing all of this, these thoughts and feelings. These things are arising, but there's very clearly a seer of these things. Yeah, and it, it's more of appreciation too. And, and you know, speaking of appreciation, we appreciate having you on the show. <laughs> oh yeah, man. Well, no, I really appreciate oh, you having me. Fantastic. And uh, guys, you can you can uh, stay tuned for Keith's new album. You know, you know. Um, coming soon. We'll we'll put a dis- you know link down in the description. Keith, just send us when it's out, and we'll we'll we'll, yeah, uh, yeah. we'll post it on all our pages and stuff, and, and the help you. Single out. Single is gonna be uh, the single's my baby, and that's probably Ooh. gonna come out. Uh, I think too. Maybe on Friday. All right, guys. It's a maybe on yeah. Friday. Um, so we'll, yeah. we'll get this up. We're going to actually post this episode on Friday. So maybe it'll be because what I'm going to do is uh, we'll, you know, we'll plan here, see how it goes. And if it, yeah, um, we're going to we'll try to see him. Um, we'll try to see if um get this episode. If it's guys, for some reason, it's out after uh, showing uh, with give Tyler some time to edit as well. Um, if it's somehow after, uh, which is perfectly fine. Um, we'll just say like, Hey, the single is already out. Go check it out here, but keep uh, tuned to our pages on Facebook and stuff. We'll post when it's out. Exactly. When it's out, just let us know Keith and we'll, we'll All hype right, it for you. Cool. Thank, thank you, you guys so much. So much. Take it's care of yourself. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks Tyler. Thank you, Jeremy. No, no problem. problem. Take care guys. Thank you.